Okay. So before I'm going to start with my talk, I um, just want to point out uh, about the Q&A. So in case you're not familiar with it yet, um, you can put the questions that come up into your mind uh, on the website, and then afterwards I will answer everything. Um, yeah, let's get started. So the name of my talk is Learn How to Pronounce German with the IPA. And I assume that you're all polyglots who try to learn German, but who struggle with the pronunciation. And I totally get it. Like, German is considered to be quite a harsh language and has a really particular set of sounds. And come in. <laughs> Thank you. And I can understand that if your mother tongue is very far away from German, that it's quite hard to, to learn how to pronounce these sounds. And actually, my mother tongue is Dutch. I am not German, but I've been living in Germany for three years now. And Germans tell me that my pronunciation is, is pretty good. And of course, that's one of the biggest um, compliments that you can get when you learn a language. So. I wish I knew what I'm going to tell you now, because I learned to pronounce German words with the help of a lot of audio input, so I listened to a lot of crappy radio shows and television shows. Some of you might know ETL. <laughs> so that's like stuff that is easy to understand, but it's just so much easier with the IPA to learn how to pronounce word, especially if you're offline. Like, if you don't have an internet connection, what are you going to do? You're, you can't uh, listen to a radio show. So I've got some Facebook comments on this. <laughs> a lot of people thought I was going to talk about beer. Of course, IPA can also stand for Indian Pale Ale. But unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about beer today. Um, I know Germans, beer, they are kind of related, but um, of course we can go for beer afterwards or you can invite me to your event and I can, yeah, <laughs> very good, um, and we, I can tell about German beer culture. But today we're going to talk about something different than the IPA that you know. So I hear you thinking, what is the IPA? So when I stu uh, started studying German, I didn't know a lot about IPA and I so assume that you don't know a lot about it too. So I'm just going to tell you everything about it. The IPA stands for International Phonetic Alphabet and is uh, devised by the International Phonetic Association in the late 19th century. And it is mostly used in linguistics. In linguistics, we really like to give language <laughs> a structure and find out what synonyms between languages are and how we pronounce them. So we have, uh, the, the association has found a way to um, show the sounds that we pronounce um, in a sort of alphabet. And that is the IPA. So <laughs> more people coming. Wow. <laughs> um, so this. <laughs> Actually, in Germany, we have this thing that you can come to your lecture like 50 minutes after the start of the hour. So I think some people thought this is going to happen. <laughs> OK, so this IPA is going to help you to pronounce these words. Because if you know like the sounds of the German language and you know what letter per per represents this IPA, you can basically pronounce every word you like. So before I'm going to talk about the IPA, IPA and why it's so fantastic. Um, I'm first going to tell you what you're going to know by the end of this talk. So I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am, in case you don't know. Um, I'm going to talk about the German language in general, something about um, what the German sounds are and how they are structures and, uh, structured, and just some tips for you. And then I'm going to talk how, uh, about how the IPA is going to help you, how to use it, and where to find it, and in, generally, in general, why it is relevant to you. So a little bit about who I am, in case you don't know. My name is Elena Fischer, and I've talked at some other polygon conferences before in German. So I thought this time it is really nice to talk in English for the people who don't speak German so that you can finally understand me and that I can help you to 
uh, improve your German. Um, as I said before, I'm Dutch, I'm not German myself. I only moved to, uh, to Germany three years ago, and uh, that is for my studies. I studied German and French in Berlin, and I've studied in Bristol and Prague before. I'm really interested in German as, as a foreign language, how foreigners uh, learn German, so you as a whole are a really interesting group for me. And I'm also a freelance translator for German, Dutch, and English, so if you or you know anyone who happens to need a translator, just drop me a message on LinkedIn. Also, if after this talk you have some question that really needs to be answered, just uh, drop me a message and I'll be happy to help you with your German. So the first thing I want to talk about is spoken versus written language. Because we grow up thinking that this is like one system, but actually they, those two are quite different. Not only in the way that in spoken language we use different words than we use when we write it down. You can come in. <laughs> Don't be shy. I'm sorry, and I think that the microphone is not working well. Oh, um, check. Okay, I'll, I'll talk a bit louder. Um, just let me know if you don't hear me. <laughs> so, the, the sounds that we produce don't really correspond with the, the things we write down, the letters we write down. So, as I said, we don't pronounce every letter. For example, um, in the German word Wahl. So in Wahl, we have this R sound, and it is written with one A in this, in this word. Then we have another example, the word Saal, and this same R sound is written by two A's. So we already have a little bit of difference here in how to represent the sounds that we make on paper. Let's look at another example, the word Wahl. And we have this same R sound, but it is written with A-H. So we already have three possibilities to write some sound down. And I can understand that if you learn German as a, f as a foreigner and you try to learn how to write it, and also another language, that it, it can be quite complicated to know if you hear a word, how to write it down, or if you see a word, how to pronounce it, right? So let's look at some other examples from other languages. Um, English or French might be your mother tongue, so it's kind of relatable. Let's look at the word light. So in light, we have, for example, the, the I, but actually we don't only say, we, we don't have one sound for this I, because actually I consists out of A, E. So it's actually two sounds, but we write only that I. And then we have the G, H, which is actually silent in the word light. So if I will be a, a learner of English, and I would think that I would pronounce every word, uh, every letter that I write down there. I thought it would be something like lig, but that, that's not proper English, right? That, that doesn't make sense. Also with the word night, we, that K at the beginning, like what is that even doing there? <laughs> we don't pronounce that. So actually, from all the words, um, like all the letters in the English language, 60% we write down is silent. We don't pronounce. Also, French is very well known for that. We have, for example, the word feu. Um, the last three words are not, uh, the three letters are not pronounced. Then we have the word blanc. And this vowel plus N combination is actually like an indication that this vowel has become nasal, so it becomes un instead of a. So those are little rules if you learn them that you know how to pronounce it. And then we have the, the worst example, O, like one sound and then four letters, Y. <laughs> to finish off with some beautiful English examples, psychology, like if I would think uh, as a, a learner of English that I would pronounce every letter, <laughs> come join us. <laughs> I would think it would be something like psychology or something. And then we have the beautiful word Eil, like Eisler. I'm not going to even start with Q, like why, why do we write it like that? So the main point I want to make is that we don't write every sound down we make or like 
not every letter corresponds with the sound we make. <coughs> and that can be a critical thing when you learn a language. I mean, any language. Some languages um, are more, have more like a phonetic writing system than others, like English and French, and more Slavic languages. It's more easy to, to know how to pronounce the word. And a really interesting thing here is that spoken language changes faster than written language. That is why um, that there is a big gap between the spoken and written language, because spoken language changes all the time. Like each and every one of you has like an individual language. We all use words that are different from others and like different amounts um, of that same word in a day, like is not the same um, that all of you do. So every person have li has like a, yeah, like a personal language, like personal vocabulary that he or she uses. And this is not only different between each person, but also within groups like People from lower class speak differently than people from higher class, use different vocabulary, use different kind of syntax. Um, everything is different. Everybody's language is unique, basically. And um, not only to mention the, the, the influence of other languages. For example, in German, we have a really big influence of um, American English. So. Not only the language, like the community that speaks the language, changes the language, but there are also really big factors from outside that change the language. So spoken language changes very fast. But then there is written language. So we are humans. We really like to hold on to rules, hold on to a spelling system. We don't like change. So this writing system that we use um, must be the same for everyone, and it can't be like the spoken language we, we, we use, that it's like unique for everyone. But for the whole, it's really important that we use the same writing system. So this written language stays the same, the things like how we spell it. So that why is a really big difference between this spoken and this written language. So let's go back to German, because that's what we're here for. Um, let's go to the word Flasche. And we also see here that we don't pronounce every letter. Um, it is Flasche, not Flastre. So we see here these three letters, S, C, H, represent the sound SH. Also, with, um, so the point I want to make is that these, um, like the, that you just don't pronounce every letter and that you can also have three letters that only represent one sound. Then we have to add Danen. So, we have this silent H, and this occurs a lot in German, so um, keep this in mind. This H is uh, in linguistic terms, denungsha, and that means that the, um, the E get like, gets like longer. You have the E, and then you have the E, so, and also pairs like A and A. And if you see this H after a vowel, it means that you um, lengthen this, this sound. So there's no actually H that you really pronounce. So if a letter doesn't represent a sound, how do we know how to pronounce it? And this is where finally, ladies and gentlemen, the IPA comes in. Um, here we see the different R's. In Germany, in the southern part of Germany, you have, for example, the R, and the normal is the H, and it is all about where to pronounce the sound in your mouth. So we're going to get a little bit medical here. <laughs> you see the places where the tongue is different. And then this whole IPA system, we, we look at where to pronounce this sound in your mouth and how, what, what you do with the lips. Um, so it is all about the place articulation. Like, as you can see, there is a lot of places where we can pronounce a sound in our mouth. And it could be that some sound in German is different from, a little bit different from, the, some particular sound you make in your mother tongue. So if you, if you produce this sound a little bit more in the front of, or in the back of your mouth, then it might be a slight difference and that can make you sound less native. So if you are aware where these sounds are, are made, um, then your accent is probably going to get better. So let's take a look at the IPA. 
we see here the consonants. And you see here, for example, labial. So these are linguistic terms, you can forget them. But labial means that it, it is in the front of your mouth. So we have, for example, m, p, b, p, f, v. And if you pronounce this ro, you feel that it's all pronounced in the front of your mouth. Um, for example, we have also glottal sounds, which are pronounced here. And the, like the H uh, symbol was meant for H. Huh. So you, you feel that it's made here. And if you practice these rows, and then you feel that those are pronounced at the same place of articulation, then you, your German might get better. And if you see the difference or feel the difference between these sounds that are made, that you make in your mother tongue and in German, um, it might improve your German. Not only the place of articulation is important, but also um, the stream of air. Like when we talk, there's just going a constant stream of air through our mouth. And um, with some um, like consonants, there is some kind of explosion. So the, the, the air that comes through your mouth is held back uh, behind your teeth and <coughs> behind your uh, lips. And then it like goes out. And that is what we call plosives in linguistics. So for example, the p. If you say p, you, you really feel that there's like energy that comes out. Um, so it is really interesting to be aware of these kind of facts about the sounds that are made in a particular language. Let's move on to the vowels. So in the vowels uh, system, we also have a few. Um, we also make the distinction where it is made. So we have vowels that are made in the back of our mouth, so like the O and the O, but also in the front, so like the E. And with the vowels, it is important to know what to do with your lips. So we have vowels that are made with like open lips, like a R, and also with closed, like the E. And if you pronounce the R and you close your lips, you automatically get to the E, so like I. <laughs> So if you are aware of where these sounds are made in your mouth in German, um, it is really possible that you improve your pronunciation. So these images here, that is like every sound that is made in German. So what I want to tell is, if you know what all these like, letters mean or like how they are pronounced and you look into a dictionary, you can basically pronounce every word you like. And that is great. <laughs> so I'm not going to like talk about every sound that uh, there was in that image, but I'm just going to tell a little bit about the, some, some very important aspects, some inside tips in German phonology. For example, we have unvoiced and voiced pairs. So what does that mean? For example, we have F, like F, and the vocal cords are not vibrating. So then we have the other um, sound in that pair, the V, and it's actually the same sound, the F, but then you let your vocal cords vibrate. So if you place your hand here, you can feel it. And that is with a lot of um, consonants. So we have the K and the G. And maybe in your native language, there is, for example, K, but there is no voiced equivalent of that. So it is really important that you're aware of these kind of pairs. Then we come to another important um, feature of German, and that is the ich and ach laut. So I was talking before about um, that some vowels are pronounced in the back of our mouth and some are pronounced more in the front. And this sound, the ch, as you can see, is more pronounced in the back. So we use this ch only um, when we have a word with a vowel that is also pronounced in the back of the mouth. And that is because we humans, we are lazy, like we want to pronounce words as easily as possible. Like language is there to guess, get a message across, to communicate. And we don't want to spend too much energy on articulating, right? That is also the same with the sh. And in the image here, you see that the sh sound is made more in the front of your mouth than in the, the back, the sh. So that is why this sound is used, um, is yeah, produced in, in words with vowels that are also more pronounced in the front of your mouth. So that's why you have wach, doch, kuchen. And if you try to pronounce this wach, doch, kuchen, 
with that sound, you, you notice that it's, it's quite hard to pronounce it. So, wach, doch, kuchen, that, that is quite hard because these sounds, those are so far away in your mouth. Um, I'm not sure about that, I think so. <laughs> but we don't have time to talk about every IPA symbol, so I just want to, yeah, I just picked a few out. So then we come to the Lehrerschwa, and that, I think this is one of the most important things to write down, because a lot of German words end with ER, so a lot of foreigners think that you have to pronounce it like R, <coughs> that there is a real R in this word, but let me tell you something, there isn't. Actually, this air sound, like this, this R that we think it is, is actually a sound between R and E, so like R. And that's what we see in, for example, Lehrer. We don't say Lehrer, we don't say Lehrer, but we say Lehrer. So it's kind of an R sound. And if you try to um, uh, practice this R sound, you'll sound definitely a lot more native. So, Let's look at some examples. We have Lera and Beta, um, even one of the most used words, like the article Der is not Der or Der, but Der. So as I said before, like, why is this relevant for you? Here we see a picture, a picture of a, a dictionary with the word dictionary, and you see the IPA transcription. So, if you learn every letter in this IPA, this International Phonetic Alphabet, and the next time you open a dictionary, you can pronounce the word. And that is very nice, because when you happen to be offline, uh, you can still practice your German. So, yeah, the key point, learn to pronounce every word you like by learning the International Phonetic Alphabet. So, a quick summary, because I know this has been a lot of information. Um, letters don't generally, uh, generally don't correspond with the sounds we make. So we sound the word light, this RE sound is only written by one I, and this GH was silent. Then you could try to pay attention to the voiced and unvoiced consonants, the Lehrerschwa and the Ich and Ach laut, and learn the IPA and your German will get an upgrade. So I just want to put a little disclaimer here because I, I'm still studying. I'm not a professor in German phonetics or a PhD student, so don't expect me to answer every question of you in detail. <laughs> also, I don't know the whole German like, language history, so uh, yeah, that's just what I want to tell you before we go to the Q&A. And as I said before, if you happen to have a question, after this Q&A session that really needs to be answered, feel free to just drop me a message and I'll, I'll be happy to answer it as well. Okay, okay so we got two questions. The first question by Anonymous is, can you recommend any good resources, resources for learning IPA? Um, I think that is quite simple. Uh, go to Wikipedia, <laughs> um, put IPA in, and then you can also go to the German page. There you can click on every single letter in this IPA alphabet. And then you probably can also click on the, uh, like the voice recording, so you hear what the sound sounds like, and there's also a lot of information about where this particular sound is produced and where it is used from examples, so Wikipedia. <laughs> um, what is the proper way to pronounce uh, like in ich and ge, in the end, like in genug? So, um, during my presentation, I talk about this schlaut. So there's, there's a difference between this ach and ich. So in the case of ich, because it's a sound that is more pronounced in the front of your mouth, it is this sh sound. 
Um, I can't tell why it's not G. It's just the way it is. I don't know. <laughs> um, Gnug. It's a hard question. What is the proper way to pronounce it? Like, I can only just pronounce it a couple of times, and then you hear the difference, maybe. <laughs> so we have uh, ich and genug. So we have the g and the sh. I don't know who, whose question was this. Mello. <laughs> I can uh, give you a little uh, pronunciation masterclass afterwards. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, well, the G is not always pronounced like uh, a hard G, like in genug. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think it's also like a variation. Some people say dreisig, um, or like at some when when the words end in e, uh, like ig, it sometimes can be. Some people pronounce it like ich, and some people pronounce it like ig. Yeah, but the you can question just is like, what is the formal way of pronouncing it? What is the correct way? Of <coughs> the way you know? Mm hmm. Um, are there any German natives here? Because <laughs> I think it is... Uh, oh, well, then you know the answer, right? Well, I mean, the thing is... <laughs> 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 You're testing me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, anyways, I mean, you know, where I grew up, people would, would say lustig. Mm -hmm. as a, and uh, you could say, like I said, ich bin uh, Yeah, but... Uh, more in the north, you know, if you go like to make the move for mm -hmm. Berlin, they would actually pronounce more like a hard G. It's been Tysik Yahid. Exactly, it's more like a variation as you already said, yeah. like I mean, don't worry like, that you don't, don't pronounce the word right. Way, though. You know, this is the dialect, but <laughs> I, mean, I, I have not studied you know Germanistic, Germanistic. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, there is a proper way, and there are rules concerning this, though. I think it, the the proper way is dreisig. I've 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 I remember from some seminar that this is actually also, um, yeah, just just a variation, as you said. Like there are also things like in um, Rheinland Pfalz, you say pfeffer uh, pfeffer uh, without the p, and then the standard is pfeffer. Ah, okay, so. Yeah, like who 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 decides what's right, right? Like it's it's a hard question. Like well, there's no there's no actual rule. Institutions, professors, whatever decide what's right. You know, like the Goethe Institute or whatever. I mean, I guess they would decide what's really correct and what should be taught. You know. Not really, no. I don't think so. Like the speakers of the language, are, it's it's hard to answer this question. Like it's. There's no no one in the country that says dreisig or dreisig is right. You can only say, okay, we see the statistics, and in a, the statistics say that dreisig is used more. Then we could say, okay, dreisig is the more used form, but it's not like the correct form. Because I remember living with a, with a roommate who was studying uh, Germanistic, and his professor would get like totally mad. If people would pronounce the G in a wrong way in certain words, so there must be a rule which I don't know concerning certain <laughs> words. You know. Um, as far as I know, there isn't. Okay. It's just, you know, as I said, like language changes. People sp speak differently in in different parts of Germany, and um, I don't know about this professor, but he should also know that there are just variation in within the German language. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, what else do we have? <coughs> There is a question, could you please give a brief explanation about the length of the vowels in German and do we know what, the different, uh, what to differentiate between the short and long ones? Um, I don't think there's a brief explanation, but um, we can talk about this afterwards, Jossi. <laughs> um, do you think it would be wise to teach the basics of phonology as part of any language learning um, by anonymous? Um, I think it is. Uh, as we saw before, like this uh, that's, that's something that occurs so much in German and if you, if you are aware of that, if you are aware what letters, like in we linguistics we say graphemes, what, what that represents, like what sound that represents, I think that would be really useful like in, in uh, language learning, yeah. Mm. From some learning German and Dutch, what's the IPA symbol and pronunciation for the Dutch glutural G? Um, I'm actually a native speaker of Dutch, so I, I also don't study Dutch, so um, I think it's just the best to look up on Wikipedia what the difference is, because I haven't learned J Dutch in that way. I, I can't answer that, I'm, I'm afraid. Mm. How to pronounce R at the begin, uh, beginning of a word like in Regen? It's not in French, is it? Uh, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's like this or it's more in the back of your mouth, it's like in French. Like I think it's quite close. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty bad because in the first image you show there were three times mm -hmm. the E, E, Krieg. Okay, so it's there somehow, it's there, there R. The French is uh, fancy, it's really soft, it's really, this one is really, I kill it with the R. <laughs> <laughs> kill it with the R. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I really don't know where, where this French R is put out in the, in, the, in the front or more back, I think, more front, but I can't really tell that as well. <laughs> mm. How do dialects play into this? I've been told the sh in ish is more in the back in many dialects and even more like sh in others. Yeah, as we've mentioned before, there are uh, variations between in the German language. Um, there are some people in Berlin who say ish, <laughs> but that's just, yeah, as I said, people just speak the language in a different way and there are variations, but um, in this case, ish, this sh is, is the standard. Uh, uh, sound in German. Yes. Okay, I would like to say uh, well, in Rheinland-Pfalz, in the Mosel region, uh, we speak Mosel Frankish. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where we pronounce every CH, like SCH. We, we would say Gesisch. Mm -hmm. We would say Ish. But, but it's a wrong way to say it, of course. And then in Berlin, they say they don't say Ich, they say Ich. You know, mm -hmm. so and then we see that the that it gets changed, we, we have a consonant change, you know, and we also mm -hmm. have many other consonant changes in most of Frankish where all the, the S's become a T, we don't say das, we say dat, mm -hmm. you know, also with two S's, you know, Yeah. and we don't say S, we say et, so it's pretty, I actually pretty close to Dutch, you know, that, that difference. Yeah, yeah I actually gave a, a, if you're interested in that, this D to S difference, I gave a talk to that, uh, about that in Reykjavik, so that's online. But um, as mentioned before, like, this is more like a social linguistic thing. Like, my opinion is that there's not really a wrong or right. Of course, there's just regional variations. Like, I think it's wrong to say that ish, it's what you pronounce in Reilat Falz is, is, is wrong. Because, yeah, that's just a regional variation. That's just how people talk like that. And who, who is entitled to say that's wrong, you know? So many million people are doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, what time, okay. L1 teachers in school uh, usually start from letters instead of sounds. IPA should be learned before alphabet. 
it will be easier than to learn any L2. Do you agree? Um, hmm. I think teaching uh, children the IPA is maybe a bit complicated because then they have to learn the IPA and just the normal alphabet, but I think it's important to make them know that, yeah, as I said before, not every sound we, we make is represented by one letter. That is yeah, basically the main point of IPA as well. Like We want to represent one sound in, in one kind of character. So I think that, that, that lesson, I think, is important to, to teach children, yeah. Any other questions? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the, in the Romance languages, so we have kind of, like in country liaison, so we just mm -hmm. connect words in a kind of rhythm. Yeah. But in German, you have a really tough rhythm, but that has kind of sense. I don't know why. So you have kind of connections between words that permit to make the sound more smooth, mm -hmm. even if it's kind of like a drum. Yeah, exactly. Um, in German there's such a thing as there's some glottal sound that is between words, between syllables. That's why German is quite like, da -da 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 -da, it's quite, sound quite hard, it's not like French, it's like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, I actually wanted to put it in a presentation, but it's just a, a really big topic to talk about. It, it is, yeah, it's, it's quite distinctive for German. Um, um, in German it's Glotal Verschusslaut, so if you're interested in that, um, you can also look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> but it's just a, a really big thing, so I, I thought I didn't have enough time for that from presentation. But um, yeah, as you said, this um, Glotal Verschusslaut, I don't know how to say it in English, um, but um, that is between uh, words and it, between syllables, most. I don't know how to write it because I, I'm Do you want to have the IPA character for it? What, sorry? Do you want to have the IPA character for it? I can. Mm. <laughs> yes. Okay, so. Um, for example. We have. Uh, so let's just take um, an easy word like ach. What what we said is ich ach laut. So if you want to write in an IPA, we have this glottal sound first that is written with this, and then ach. So then every time in a syllable where you have the vowel first, this becomes this is first. So you see, it's a bit complicated. So it takes too long to explain this everything. Um, I didn't learn the IPA because I learned German when I was at 13, and I, I only learned IPA when I was in university. Um, but I think, as I said, I, I definitely think it would help to be aware of this, this uh, sound system of a particular language and then combine it with listening so that you know what each sound sounds like. Yes? Is um, reading or studying phonetics a way to eliminate one's uh, native accent? Not entirely eliminated, but I think you can, you can, it's just just a step further, I think, if you are aware of the differences between the phonetic system of your mother tongue and the phonetic system of the, the target language. Yeah. But, but would you say you, you have a native accent speaking German? People tell me I don't. <laughs> so. um, how much time do we have? Uh, we have five more minutes. Any other questions? And otherwise, I would say I wish you good luck learning German.